Hey everyone, here's just a quick video looking at some possession, attack and turnover buttons and then using our clusters, activation links and exclusion links to build up some useful workflows for our template. So firstly, I'm just going to look in and show you what this does and then we'll look into how I created it. So let's say team A have possession and then it turns into an attack. So both of these are manual mode category buttons. Then let's say that team A turn it over. So I click this descriptor. That descriptor gets added into both team A attack and team A possession, but then we've activated team B possession. And because that one's come off, our team A buttons have gone off. Uh, sorry, this one's come on, so these have gone off. Now we press team B attack. And in the same way, I could press team B turnover. These ones turned off and team A possession has come on. And our team B turnover descriptor has gone into those last buttons. So let's take a look at the template. What I have are manual mode buttons for the attack and possessions, and then I've got exclusions. So team B possession is exclusive to team A possession, team A attack. Same applies for the attack buttons for both sides. Then I have an activation link from team B turnover to team A possession, team A turnover to team B possession. So here we're saying that if team B turnover, they're losing the ball and providing it to team A. So to add a link, when you've got activation links, you hold down the space bar and you click and drag to a button. So let's just go and remove that from here. So hold down spacebar, click and drag, and I've added a link. You see this is a blue arrow. That's because by default, the descriptor here is gonna to go to the next category. But I don't want this descriptor to go to the next one, which is turning on. I want it to go to the previous one. So I change this drop down and say, go to previous. What I've also done, because I think this is useful because I want to get some more clips, is I've put these turnover buttons as the vertical order of one, and then I'm going to cluster these over two categories that I've got in the background. So team A turnover and team B turnover, which are categories with a preset time of 10 seconds before. So I want to see uh, why we lost the ball. And I'm going to just drag and drop these over. Let's just hold down G to turn on our grid reference and then drag and drop. Now I let go of G and the grid reference is gone. So this time I can say team A have got possession, then they're in, in attack, then they turn it over. So we have the same process of turning on team B and team A turning off, but I've also created another clip called team A turnover. And we'll come to that shortly. So team B attack, team B turnover, we have the same processes running, and then my cluster again. So the reason I do that is that when I go to my timeline, or as I saw in my play-by-play -play there, I can have three bits of clips. So let's press the plus key on our timeline to zoom in here. So I'm going to look at, uh, for example, let's go here. Team B possession, which starts back here, so I can watch the whole possession from start to finish. And then I could just watch the point where they're attacking, so from start to finish. Ignore the video, this isn't meant to line up, this is quite quite a fluke and then let's say if they turned it over so they turned it over at this point in our scenario because this is then what went to turn on team a possession i also then made a team b turnover but rather than just watching it from the moment that we that we lost the ball i could now watch for example the 10 seconds before that moment and then the five seconds afterwards so i can see what led to that turnover and then how we recovered from there so just the use of activation links exclusion buttons and some clusters to create some useful data and also some useful clips for us to go and look at as well. I hope you found it useful.